Welcome back to another new video on Vedic Astrology. My name is Gautam, host for this channel from Canada. And in this video, we are going to discuss about Lunar Eclipse, Chandra Grahan, which is happening tonight. And it's going to go all the way till like tomorrow morning. So Lunar Eclipse is happening between the late evening of September the 17th and going to go all the way till like early morning of September 18th. It's a partial lunar eclipse and is very much visible in North America, Canada. In Asia, the impact will remain very less, but since it's a celestial event which is happening, so there will be certain energy changes which I feel for every one of you. So the message of this video is to let you know what are the energy updates which we all have for you and how would be your life in the next three to four weeks what are the certain do's and don'ts you have to do and you have to be very careful so carefully watch this video till the end and hit the like button all right let me know you guys are watching this video so in this video we are going to discuss about all the 12 ascendants all the 12 rising signs and their results their impact for the next three to four weeks how will be the time after the lunar eclipse a lunar eclipse uh, happens only on like a full moon day because uh, the position of earth is such that earth is between the sun and the moon the there is a certain geometry which results into eclipses so today is the lunar eclipse and what what it will bring what impact will it have on certain ascendants so let's start with the very first ascendant which is our Aries ascendant so if you are an Aries ascendant and if you if your rising sign is Aries then how would be this lunar eclipse impacting you is as you can see on the screen I have this Aries ascendant presentation with all the planetary impacts so the number one indicates if you have this is the first house the first box is the first house and if you see number one over here in your chart that indicates you are an Aries ascendant now this rising sign and ascendant is as per the Vedic astrology and not as per the Western astrology because there is a little difference between the Vedic and the Western astrology so try to follow the Vedic astrology rising sign and if you don't know your rising sign you can comment below and let me know what is your rising sign so you see number one here one indicates as Aries as the rising sign so if you are an Aries rising sign then the energy update for you is that the lunar eclipse is happening right in the sixth house and the twelfth house wherein moon is with Rahu conjunction and sixth house sun is with the Ketu conjunction and this is resulting into the lunar eclipse for the Aries ascendant the time I would say for you specifically three to four very important message number one you are going to forget some important things in the next three to four weeks for the next one month try to make sure that you plan your things well in advance don't keep anything for 12th hour Aries ascendant or Aries rising has to be careful because next three to four weeks is emotional imbalance time this is the time when the lunar eclipse is happening in the 12th house the house of you know overthinking anxiety is at the peak for you so you have to be very careful with that element because moon and Rahu moon is emotional it causes emotional imbalance and that too in the 12th house is not a good sign specifically so some ascendants the lunar eclipse is going to be good but for some ascendant it might not be good depending upon what houses the planetary energy are so the planetary energy which you have right now is not supporting your health too so try to be very meticulous with your health as well as your uh, overall enmity there could be a little rise or secret enmity which would be happening in your life sixth house right and venus also exists in the sixth house so this secret secretive enmity or jealousy is coming from some feminine some female friend or some feminine energy 
in your social circle because Venus is represents female and Venus rules the second house the house of family and the seventh house the house of social so through family and through social circumstances is where I feel is is going to be a little difficult time like you know very high possibility that females will be giving you a hard time in the next three to four weeks so be careful all right that's that's the biggest message for Aries rising let's jump on to the Taurus rising what if your rising sign is Taurus which means in this very first house if you see the number two coming in that means you are a Taurus rising for Taurus rising the eclipse is happening right in the 11th and the 5th house 11th and the 5th house so this combination is also not very good you have to be very careful with your friends if you're planning to do a get together or if you're planning some business or work with your friend in the next three to four weeks that could be a problem that could be a trouble so please be careful for that secondly there could be little stress coming in from your kids because fifth house is associated with the kids and Sun and Ketu both there in the, in, the, in the fifth house could be a little bad news coming in from the kids side if you are a Taurus rising if you are Taurus ascendant okay but overall what I feel is uh, for Taurus ascendant you have to also be very careful during this time because this is a time the energy your personal physical energy is draining a lot because Rahu and Moon are in the 11th house so you're trying to achieve something you put in 100% efforts but you might not get like 100% results because Rahu and Moon are in the 11th house which is 11th house is positive it gives uh, fulfillment of all the desires and gains but since due to this eclipse thing the desires would feel like very far away from you and even after putting so many efforts you would still feel that but however Jupiter is going to get retrograde from October the very first week and Jupiter is in your first house at the moment so that would that is going to bring in some good news for you good abundance good news and upsurge in energy levels for three weeks energy will do, go down but suddenly in like October first week when the Navratri starts uh, you know one of the auspicious time starts during that time there will be an upsurge in your energy levels too much so that's that's the biggest message for the Taurus rising all the other planetary energies are very good for Taurus let's see what's happening for the Gemini rising for the Gemini rising uh, if you have like number three over here in your first house that means you are a Gemini ascendant and Gemini rising if this is the combination then Moon and Rahu is in the 10th house and Sun Ketu and Venus this combination is happening in your fourth house so 10th house signifies that there could be certain loss in the business specifically you are into entrepreneurship then there could be certain decision making which would not be going good in the next three weeks so hello be careful Gemini ascendants I'm telling that I told all my clients to Gemini ascendant if you are taking any big step or big decision in your business in the next three weeks then you have to be very careful if possible try to take decision after the October the 6th when Jupiter starts its retrograde that will be good but during the next three weeks it could be a little dicey scenarios for you however Sun and Ketu and Venus in the fourth house for uh, Gemini rising and that is okay that is not going to bring much uh, but the only thing is there could be certain expenses which would be happening for your home like you would be renovating or some construction work or you might be in case if you're buying like a house you would get an expensive deal fourth house also represents vehicle Ketu in the fourth house and Sun and Venus that to debilitated is a clear indication that there could be certain expenses or your car or your vehicle can get get broke down in the next one month so Gemini rising people drive carefully keep all your documents in place don't rush don't hurry and specifically if you're in job 
then there could be certain stress coming in from your boss because 10th house indicates boss and higher management and moon and rahu in 10th house can make your management at your workplace go very crazy so be careful and at the end of the video i'm going to give you one specific mantra which could really help you for all the ascendants and this mantra is very powerful so the fourth ascendant is the cancer ascendant if you see the four number over here that means you are cancer rising and if you're a cancer rising if, if you're a cancer ascendant then rahu and moon are in ninth house sun ketu venus is in the third house and this combination the energy update for you for the next one month is that there could be certain problems coming in from long distance for you because Rahu and Moon are in the ninth house. Ninth house indicates long distance connections and some bad news or something coming in from long distance for you. However, if you are into more of communication or communication related work or business or job, then you have to again be careful because Sun, Ketu and Venus are in the third house. The only good thing uh, which I feel for Cancer Rising is that when the Jupiter gets retrograde in the 11th house, that could be a, specifically it could be like a good news coming in suddenly. You're working really hard. Next three weeks, how much ever you would put effort, the fourth week, you're 100% getting the results. So forget what happened. Try to let go things from the past. Now you have to focus what are your plans for the next exactly 14 to 15 days if you dedicatedly meticulously if you work then i feel for cancer rising for you it could be a very good time it could that this this could be very good time leading into the diwali time the navratri and the diwali is also coming very soon so that could be a very uh, fruitful time for you october can be one of the best month for cancer rising let's see the next ascendant is the leo ascendant and for the leo ascendant um, sun and ketu are in the second house and moon and rahu are in the eighth house eighth house signifies sudden stress or tension or anxiety or even accident so you have to be very careful or there could be certain uh, probability that you know you might go for some ad adventure or adventurous sports and that will turn out to be a nightmare for you so next three four weeks if you are like planning to travel or something then you have to be very careful specifically the leo rising if you see phi number here and if you are a leo ascendant then you have to be very careful with finance and money because sun and ketu are in the second house the house of money the house of finance and during next three weeks or four weeks of time if you are investing a big deposit of money somewhere a big sum that could prove to be a loss also moon and rahu are in the eighth house and eighth house um, signifies that you your routine like what you used to have your daily routine is going to go very much into stress and you know your daily routine will get really disturbed during this time and so the best remedy for you is to just try to take care of your routine you will see certain unusual things also happening. Eighth house is like very scary, but uh, this lunar eclipse, this is the right time for you to really work on manifestations, really work for you to cleanse in your energies, your home energies, because eighth house signifies like energies and even like bad energies, evil eye, black magic, everything. If you're a Leo rising, tomorrow, today and tomorrow could be a very good day for you to really cleanse in your energy, remove the evil eye and make yourself very energetic. Okay, so that was for the Leo Ascendant. Uh, so the next is Virgo Ascendant. What for Virgo Ascendant? If you have number six over here, uh, that means in the first house you have Virgo, which means you are a Virgo Ascendant, you are Virgo Rising. So. Ketu and Sun are exactly in your first house and Rahu and Moon are in the seventh house. First house is you, seventh house is your partner, life partner, business partner or anyone socially. 
there is a huge possibility that you are going to suddenly meet someone because seventh house has Pisces sign and in Pisces sign you have moon and Rahu this combination typically uh, is very good for networking for you it's a good time I would say to really network for your business for your work if you're finding very difficult to find a partner then there could be certain magic skits which could happen in next one month of time so it's that time of the year which is going to be very favorable for you for certain money certain wealth and certain success first house has ketu and sun just be a little careful with your immunity because the weather is changing now we are getting into the fall in north america and canada it's like an official fall and if you're from like uh, australia or new zealand again the weather would be changing in that part of the world too so i feel everywhere in the world the weather is, is drastically would be changing between october month so you have to be careful during this time of the eclipse and now we have the seventh zodiac sign of uh, libra if you have a uh, libra seven number in your very first house that indicates that you are a libra rising you are a libra ascendant and as per the Vedic Astrology, Sun and Ketu are in the 12th house. Moon and Rahu in the 6th house. Now, Rahu is very materialistic. This is the time when you are going to get very materialistically uh, powerful. You can even get like, if you're searching for a job or some work, yes, you can manifest. You can manifest your career. You can manifest your work. Because moon rules your 10th house here you see the number four moon rules your 10th house and the 10th house lord is in the sixth house and that too with rahu which can be like sudden gains or sudden wealth or sudden promotion or sudden news if you're searching specifically searching job or something then this energy of lunar eclipse i feel is more positive for you and if you're searching for peace if you're searching for Moksha, spiritual path. Ketu is in the 12th house with sun. Ketu is spiritual planet and sun gives the light of wisdom, of spiritual spirituality in the 12th house. So all my Libra rising friends, people, this is a very good time for you to be more spiritual in life. And um, it, it's like spiritual and even like materialistic. Both the energies are there. Whatever you want, you choose you what you want. It's like that kind of an energy. You want materialistic gains, manifest that, you will get it. If you want spiritual path, you manifest that, you will get that. Either one of this is something is what you will get, not both. <laughs> I wish we can get like both. Uh, but universe is like just in a mood to give one because it's an happy hour. This lunar eclipse is happy hour for a lot of ascendants, including Libra rising, Libra ascendant. So let's try to manifest good things in this happy hour. <laughs> so the next uh, ascendant is Scorpio. If you see number eight in the first house, that means you are a Scorpio riser, ascendant, Scorpio rising. Now, Sun and Ketu are in the 11th house. Moon and Rahu are in your fifth house. For Scorpio rising people, the eclipse is giving certain energies related to your fifth as well as your 11th house now 11th house is getting powerful because your 11th house has Virgo sign and sun is over there so sun is giving that light to really stay motivated that light that ignition is coming up you might be getting little motivated to start something new or work getting more independent at this time because your the planet of your like ascendant lord scorpio ascendant lord is also in the eighth house at the moment so and that too in gemini so you would be thinking like transformation or big changes at this moment however moon and rahu are in the fifth house it could bring a lot of mood swings remember in my last video i told what's your moon sign and what does moon do moon is the planet of mood swings moon is the planet of emotional imbalance and moon in the fifth house can be a very sign of a lot of emotional imbalance in your love, romance and relationship. So if you're a Scorpio ascendant, work is good for the next three to four weeks. 
but what about your love whatever your partnership your that side is a little down for the next 3 to 4 weeks so watch out the next ascendant is sagittarius ascendant sagittarius rising if you see the number 9 over here that means you are a sagittarius rising and sun and ketu are in the 10th house moon and rahu have come in the very 4th house over here plus mars is in the 7th house which is good mercury 9th house good venus 11th house good 7 9 11 sagittarius dhanu rashi you guys are very lucky during this time of the month like september mid to october month mid is absolutely fantastic time for you to really work hard and get the recognition sun is in the 10th house it's very powerful sun typically in the 10th house is powerful we all know in vedic astrology that's the powerful position for sun and which is the powerful position for moon that's the 4th house so moon in 4th house sun in 10th house what else you need plus rahu is in the 4th house ketu is in the 10th house yeah there could be uh, ketu can really uh you know soak your energies from work but at this time work is going to be very good that's my prediction for you sagittarius rising people will have a good time in work and at home however just take care of two things work life balance at home and work life balance at work also so work life try to balance it because the the axes are exactly at your home rahu is in home and ketu is in at your work so it's if it's like opposite then it's good but rahu fourth ketu tenth that could be a disturbing factor for work life balance all right but otherwise all okay all good for the sagittarius rising now let's see the 10th rising the capricorn uh if you have number 10 over here that means you are a capricorn ascendant capricorn rising personality and for you moon rahu third house ketu sun ninth house here ketu in the ninth house is very good it makes you religious it makes you spiritual and even like sun gives that light over there however uh, rahu and moon in the third house is going to cause certain miscommunication through your phones through your emails so you have to be very careful with your emails you have to be very careful with messages you might delay some communication you want to de- you want to convey something to someone but you are purposefully trying to delay it so this is the right time for you to really focus and you know try to communicate what's there with everyone okay but typically the lunar eclipse right uh, is is overall a very positive energy for capricorn rising and i don't see any problem coming in uh mercury is in the 8th so just be careful with more of communication because the planet of communication is in the 8th too and rahu is in the 3rd so that's what communication if you're traveling take your insurance if you're going somewhere long distance take care of your luggage or you know if you're planning something long distance then there could be a lot of to and fro like you're thinking but then you're canceling you're holding yourself this someone is telling you that let's go somewhere but you're holding the plans i think the best time for you is like after mid october to plan long distance all right that was capricorn rising now let's see the aquarius rising if you have like number 11 over here in the first house that indicates that you are an aquarius ascendant aquarius rising and for aquarius rising specifically the moon and rahu are in the second and sun and ketu are in the eighth house now this combination moon in the second house there could be some bad news in the family or family scenarios are getting really emotional because moon is making your family circumstances very emotional and out of nowhere because rahu is in the second house for you at the moment and uh, the circumstances will be very weird at home you know people would not be listening to you your family will not be listening to you suddenly you you will feel lost suddenly you would want to take a break from the family yes that's a good idea if you want to take a break 
and focus on your self care that is the best idea in this moment for a curious rising personality sun and ketu in the 8th house so the lunar eclipse is happening between the 2nd and the 8th house and during this time ketu in the 8th sun in the 2nd uh sorry rahu in the 2nd and ketu in the 8th is is a good good sign for you to really manifest money really manifest a uh, sudden money or sudden wealth could be on your way if you have if you see like dreams or you're getting like some positive dreams or weird dreams of winning a lottery or something i think this is a good time for you just just to give a shot you never know right uh, eclipse can be suddenly success suddenly positive for some people and the last ascendant is our f- most promising most favorite pisces if you are a pisces rising then you have to be careful and you have to be also be very careful with your health because moon and rahu are in your f- first house sun and ketu are in your 7th house now this combination is making your partner more spiritual like you are trying to dominate because of rahu you have many ideas and you are trying to put them on on people around you specifically your partners but your partner is not listening because ketu is in the 7th house your partner is going very spiritual at the moment and is not ready to listen and even is getting frustrated because of sun the 6th house lord in the 7th house for you so this is a time the pisces for all the pisces rising people to be calm stay calm you know give a moment to yourself connect with the nature connect for your health for the next 3 to 4 weeks it's very important for you to focus on the self care too and self realization do not dominate on other people and try to try to um get more strong like emotionally more strong yes you are trying to tell something to someone they are not listening and eventually you are getting sad stop you have to be more confident and move forward for just 3 weeks and you will see a huge change in your overall life all right so this was all the predictions for all the 12 ascendants for this lunar eclipse energy update for the next 3 weeks 3 to 4 weeks i hope you have liked the video thank you so much for watching and i really really wish that this lunar eclipse goes good the mantra for all the ascendant is related to lord shiva if you can chant om namah shivaya before sleeping and after getting up in the morning for at least 11 11 times that will be very powerful for you okay so wish you all the very best good luck and i really pray that this eclipse brings joy and happiness and maintains a good stability in our life thank you